Well, first off, it's, it's great to have a practice team. Um, it's, it's, very, um, it's, it's very enlightening to see that we have 13 healthy bodies on the floor. Uh, this season, our team is looking uh, to be that team that we want to see in postseason play. We want to be that team that finishes in the top um, top of our conference to have better seating for the SEC tournament. Um, we've got a lot of goals set for this team, and that's one of the, the first things that we talked about um, in the offseason is how do we reach those goals. Uh, we have some veteran players returning, which I'm pleased to say that Regine Moncrief has been cleared and she's been practicing with us um, along with Ayanna Mitchell. Uh, but we also got some young kids that we got to bring along. This offseason was a season of really just trying to assess where we were physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, and, and the team did a great job of really trying to hone in on the, uh, the exercises that we had from a rehabilitation standpoint. And then going into preseason, uh, last week we started on Monday with two-a-days. And the team really is, is in that mode of learning. And so we're doing a lot of skill development right now along with some of our team concepts. But very proud of where we're at. I like the energy in practice. I like uh, the uh, leadership, of especially our veteran guards. So looking forward to an exciting season. Hey, Coach, you, you mentioned the injuries right off the, the bat, so we all kind of understand what that did to your team last year. How much, you know, can you improve upon that, and do you feel like that held you back from maybe progressing as a program, and, and where do you hope that it's different this year? Well, if you had told me going into the season last year that we're going to have uh, four kids close to the averaging double digits, I'd have been like, oh, that's great, um, but when you only have six, that really doesn't lend for a lot of points being scored. Um, so, you know, the fact that we're healthy, the fact that we've got um, players that um, are returning who, due to injuries or transfer rules and then being newcomers, uh, that's, that's a practice that looks like a team that's learning. And I like the fact that they're taking, the, especially the ones who played last year, they're, they're taking all of that experience because they got a lot of playing time and you can't really substitute playing time and, and those reps that you get in practice. And I know that's only gonna help Jasmine Rhodes, that's only gonna help Rena Hill, Jenna Deemer, um, and Alexis Hyder, the four young ladies who played a bulk of the minutes for us last season. Coach, where are you at with uh, toughness in the paint and uh, post? That you have some new post players that are supposed to really contribute there, right? Yes, we do. Uh, you know, obviously Alexis Hyder is going to lead the attack. Um, she brings a, a, a dimension of, of strength and toughness and scoring in the paint, but she's also um, stretched her game where we're going to be able to run her at the foursome in that trail spot. Uh, she also has the green light to shoot the three, but I like the play of our two freshmen, uh, Faustina Fuwa, who is a 6'4", um, just athletic kid who really can score around the basket, and Yasmin Bidikundala, who is a 6'6 kid. I know you're going to have to work on the pronunci pronunciation of their last names, but we call one Yaz and we call the other one Foss. So, but those two bring a presence in the paint, a low block presence that we hadn't had probably since Teresa plays on. So there's somebody that we can now match up. When you look at some of the bigs um, in the country, in our league, uh, we're going to be able to play a little bit more man-to-man -man because we're going to match up size-wise. Now, I do love playing small ball. I do still uh, like the fact that we can go to a smaller, quicker, faster lineup, but those two in particular will allow us to play more of a power game. A quick follow-up. Um, Caldwell and I would just say yes yeah, and false on the sports, if that's okay with you. That's fine. <laughs> No, but uh, Jenna Deemer, we saw her the other day. It looked like she's really muscled up. Has she gotten bigger and stronger? Jenna has done a, a, a good job of just really being that player that's trying to develop every year. And um, she's somebody who we're going to look to um, to be that sharpshooter for us. It doesn't take a lot of attempts for her to make those baskets. So I like the fact that she's able to stretch the defense. I like the fact that we can play to our dribble drive and really put the ball on the floor and then allow her to spot up. Uh, she is someone who commands uh, hard denial. Uh, she commands you to defend her away from the basket, which uh, will allow our post game to have more, much more uh, space to maneuver. Um, but she's definitely going to be a great offensive threat for us on the floor. Uh, 
Uh, entering year six now, just I know expectations and pressure from within the building are always greater than what anybody can put on the outside. But do, do you feel like this is the kind of put up, shut up year for you, your staff, and this team? This is a year that um, our team has felt um, what I wouldn't put through any other team in the country from what they had to experience last year. Um, but this was a team of young ladies who came every day and gave me everything that they had. Uh, this is a team that now has uh, help, and we have healthy help. Uh, we have a team that is hungry. You know, one of the things that they came up with in the off season was HUSH, and that acronym H-U-S-H, uh, -S -S and H standing for this team is going to be hungry this year. They're going to be hungry to come after people. Um, obviously, that's going to start with our defensive pressure and our ability to score in the paint and knock down open jump shots. Uh, U was for them to be united. Uh, we know that we cannot leave uh, the gym and, and, and not give everything that we got, but we got to do it um, as, a, as a unit. And when you look at our schedule, we've got a tough schedule ahead of us. Uh, seven, eight of our opponents in the non-conference were in postseason play, and then, you know, when you hit SEC play, that's going to be tough as well. Uh, our last ten games in the SEC, six of those are on the road, so we've got, we definitely got to be united, and we've got to be road warriors. Uh, with the uh, S, they were talking about being selfless, and selfless is them giving to each other. They're going to be a team that you're going to see strong help side defense. You're going to see players taking charges. Uh, you're going to see players um, giving up their shot to get a better shot for our team. And then the final part of that hush was heart. You know, this team is going to play with a lot of heart. And that's one thing that consistently that these young ladies have done year in and year out is they play with a lot of heart and emotions, and they play with that on their sleeves. Um, so you're going to see a lot of um, uh, high fives, uh, probably some chest bumps, things like that. But the emotion and the fun of the game is going to be there for them. Hi, Coach. Hello. Um, so are you able to comment on Jenner Deemer's like, sickness and her coming back to the court? Well, Jenner right now is cleared to play and practice, and so we're obviously happy about that, and we're looking forward to her contribution to our team. She, uh, she's somebody who has um, fought an illness, and now she's back with us. Um, Nikki, obviously all players are different, but <clears throat> you've got four players who – didn't play last year, two were hurt, two transfers. Is there a common element in that when a player has had to sit out for that long that you find them hungrier, rusty, whatever, especially well, when you get into game play? You know, the, the first day of practice, you, you could see the, them being a little rusty, but uh, it wasn't lack of effort. It wasn't lack of them trying. It was just not being in that flow of the game, flow of a practice on a consistent basis. But you can see the timing is coming back. Uh, you can see that Moncrief is coming into her own. And, you know, when a player comes off of uh, an injury, and, and two major injuries, mind you, where they're season-ending injuries with um, an ACL and then um, back injury, uh, there's, a, there's a mental block there as well. And as um, athletes, you tend to maybe try to favor or think something is going on when it really isn't. But these two young ladies, Ayanna Mitchell and Regine Moncrief, uh, have hit the floor and they are not being held back by their injuries, uh, previous injuries. They're playing with a passion. They're playing with a sense of urgency and uh, we expect great things from them. Uh, Nikki, when I spoke to you earlier, uh, you, you talked about how you love to play zone, but with the players you have this year that you can see being more of a man-to-man -man team. Could you expound a little bit more on that and what, what talents or uh, what, what talents about your team make you feel that that's a better way to go? The versatility of our team to play um, a matchup zone. Our matchup zone plays like a man-to-man. -man. It just has zone principles. But uh, when we're in transition, we don't want to give up easy baskets. If we can take away transition points and keep people off the offensive glass, uh, we're going to meet our defensive goal, which is keep our opponents in the 40s. Uh, defensively, because of the roster, we're going to be able to match up with bigger post players. Um, if we do go to our man-to-man, -man, uh, we may see more of that this year because of uh, Yasmeen and Faustine. Uh, they give us a true presence on the low block, and they're also um, very good shot blockers. So 
We like the versatility um, of being able to switch up our defenses and keep our opponents uh, guessing um, how we're going to come down the floor and play. Sometimes when you do look at our man, our matchup, it, it already lends the look of a man-to-man, -man, so it won't be too much of a transition for them. To, for those of, for those of the former players or returning players who played mat, the matchup, they'll be able to grasp the man-to-man -man easily. Uh, with this being the first season since Coach Summit passed away, how do you expect this season to feel a little different, especially once you get into conference play? You know, when you lose someone of great meaning to the women's game uh there's a there's a void there um i know personally um she's somebody that has changed uh, my life but she's also changed the game of basketball for for so many other people and for other sports and you're going to miss um you know even the the appearances that she did have here and there uh just seeing her out there on the court um, receiving awards or her crusade for um, finding a cure for Alzheimer's, you're just going to miss being able to see her. Um, you know, we, there was a period there where you missed talking to her, but you visually could still have that connection. So, um, for 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 me, I, I just feel you know our our best tribute um, that we can ever pay Coach Summit is to be the best people. Um, that we can be in this life to treat people like we want to be treated and to obviously show an un, 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 unwavering amount of respect um, to this game that has given so many of us opportunities. Do you have a five that you like or is it going to be competition, you know, like every coach loves? It, it's definitely competition and I haven't um, named a five yet. I want everybody to stay competitive, stay in that mode of, um, of playing and trying to win out positions. Um, I think that's healthy when you're able to uh, do that. I like that we can have a purple and a gold team um, <laughs> and split, split our players up. Um, but I think the one thing that um, I will say from a, uh, the leadership of, of Regine Moncrief being back on the floor, it, she, she definitely makes us a lot better. Uh, Rena Hill is going to be coming into her own um, and, and doing a great job of, of being that uh, leader as well to complement Regine Moncrief. Those two on the top of my matchup is pretty pretty good defensive look. And can't say enough about Alexis Hyder and her ability to not only score the basketball, but rebound the basketball, assist, she can, she can handle. Uh, she can play one through five for me. So, you know, those three um, are probably three that we've identified um, through practice that have, you know, that are working extremely hard and at a different level right now. I, I would like to hear you say the names of your two new post players again. Yasmin Bidikundala mm -hmm. and, and Faustina Fuwa. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be a spelling F test later. Yeah. Huh? F A U S T I N E. <laughs> Faustine. <laughs> uh, do you, that, they're both freshmen, so do you hope that they can come along where both could play at the same time? Do you see the, you know, rotating one for the other? What, do you have any idea at this no, point? No, they will not play at the same time. No. no? Okay. Um, the reason being um, because right now they're learning uh, one spot in, in our matchup, uh, they're learning to be that true center. And I don't want to overload their circuits right now, but as we as we go along in the season, I would like to be able to move them to different, um, especially probably Faustine more than Yasmin. She's a little bit more um, of a mobile um, player, athletic, athletic uh, six five kid. But um, if I do play both of them, um, watch out because their ability to score on score on the low block. Um, if one misses the other one, the other one's six six. She'll be able to clean it up. So I got two great bookends. Um, I just my concern would be bringing them along from a defensive standpoint because uh, I think guarding the four, especially an athletic stretch four, is going to be a little bit of a challenge right now for them. Um, but but they definitely are two players that are going to see valuable minutes this season. Kind of piggybacking on that, when we see bigs out of high school, either than the men's or women's games, sometimes you know the speed of the game and their conditioning is what holds them back the most. I guess where are these girls at uh, transitioning to college ball in that realm? Well, you know what helped Faustine was she was able to come in the off season 
and work in the summer to get a baseline so she's not too far behind. Yasmin didn't come until um, August, and so she's still doing the extra. She's doing the extra conditioning. She's working hard with Melissa, our strength coach, and her team. Um, but in our practice, you know, the tempo of the game, they've got, they're definitely getting used to that. But we don't have your typical guards either. I mean, Raging Moncrief, uh, Rena Hill, uh, Shanice Norton, Chloe Jackson, you know, these kids can really sprint the floor, so, but we're not waiting for them either, but they know that I can't be too far off of them in our sprint work. Back along the line they asked you about Coach Summit, is, is it, after you've been a head coach for a long time, but does it feel a little odd having Mickey, being um, Mickey's boss, so to speak, and what has she brought to program? <laughs> Uh, you know, DeMoss is um, 40 years. Uh, I believe she's been in the business 40 years. And, um, you know, the thing about DeMoss is uh, she is going to make me better. And she's going to make our staff better and our team better through her experiences. And I was fortunate to play for DeMoss. And when I was a grad assistant at Tennessee, I, I was glued to her hip. I wanted to learn about the, the business. And um, she's somebody that has just a great balance of, um, she's been a head coach, but she absolutely has no, uh, <laughs> no desire to go back to being a head coach. And she loves where she's at um, in assisting our program in this capacity. But I like being able to tap into not only what she's been able to do at the collegiate level, but what she's also been able to do professionally in the WNBA in winning a championship at that level. So she brings a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of experience. Um, it's like having a different set of eyes on your team, like in practice. Um, she, you know, she's making a lot of notes, she's critiquing, and I'm taking those um, suggestions and we're implementing them and just very attentive to the details of the game. Um, but her relationship with our team is, is you know, even though you have a, an age difference, uh, she's very in tune to this generation and obviously the young ladies that we're trying to sign as well. So I, I love having DeMoss with us. Um, again, she's a, a Louisiana native and this is home for her. And uh, she's somebody that has always had a, a special place in her heart for LSU. Kind of along those lines, after every year, I'm sure you do some evaluating. Was there a hole in your resume personally that you identified and maybe wanted to work towards this year being better at? Um, I think the one thing that, um, you know, I'm always looking to be better in relationships with our players. I think that's something that has got to be constant because I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm a little older, but I'm also old school. And understanding how these young ladies and men, how they communicate with each other um, is a little different, um, <laughs> but not necessarily wavering on what my values are. Um, but I'm learning how to uh, give, take a little bit. Um, I think I'm becoming a better negotiator where it's not just what I was taught and then that's it and that's how we do it. Um, it's more so now seeing things through their lenses and incorporating and, and having um, in-depth dialogue where they're taking more ownership of the team. Um, where if something isn't going right in practice, I may pull Moncrief or Rena Hill to the side and allow them to address. So allowing them to be better leaders, um, taking a back seat and grooming them to take more ownership and not feel like everything that goes on, I've got to have an input or say, allow them to have that room for growth. Coach, you spoke a little bit about Ayana, I guess, but can you just speak to her more? A little, uh, I heard a lot of people say, boy, they really, if they would have had her last year, the season could have been a lot different. It would have been a lot different. I, I think she could have been easily freshman of the year. She's somebody that's very athletic, um, runs the floor hard, can defend, brings a lot of energy, can score the basketball. Uh, this year, she's obviously with that red shirt, she still could be freshman of the year. I like Ayana's um, just 
her personality on the floor. You're gonna see uh, a very passionate young lady um, who you know would be a great compliment. We call Moncrief our, our hype our hype man, but she's really a woman. But we call her our hype man, and I like that Ayana feeds off of that. Um, especially when you're on the road, you're gonna need somebody that wants to clear boards and and really go at uh, the opponent, and she will bring that to our team. A different toughness um, that will complement Alexis Hyder inside. Nikki, uh, given the season y'all had last year. It's going to be very curious to see where y'all are picked, like at media days, uh, to finish in the conference. People probably don't know what to make of your team exactly. But you, you, can that play to your advantage a little bit that people may, for for one of the few times in many years, might un underestimate LSU a little bit? Well, I mean, they've picked us to be, you know, middle six, seven, eight, and we finished top four three years in a row. So I don't know if they always get that right. Um, it's just their their opinion. I think when you look at our team and the schedule that we put together, um, we're going to be prepared for SEC play. We've got one of the toughest schedules in the conference. Uh, like I said, eight of our opponents in our non-conference um, experience postseason play. We start on the road, uh, again, preparing for SEC play on the road, but playing teams like Connecticut, um, we've got um, K-State, UTEP, uh, Little Rock was in the tournament. You've got Tulane, who was a tournament team. Um, even Alabama State was a tournament team. And, and you know, those teams kind of play a little differently. So, you know, to me, it's about preparing our team for SEC play. And so to be able to have this type of um, schedule we're at, um, we're playing North Carolina on the road this year. Uh, all, those, all those games and all those experiences that our young ladies are going to be put in is only going to help them have that um, courageous heart that they need to go on the road. So when you're playing, you know, when you look at our SEC play, our SEC season, you're playing at Tennessee and you're playing at Mississippi State and at Texas A&M, some of the top teams in, in, our, in our conference, then you, you've got to have a, a toughness about you. And that this does not happen overnight. Like they're going to need November, December to get ready to go at these teams in January. Uh, Coach, can you just speak to hosting UConn? I imagine this is going to be an event, not just a, a basketball game. And is it good for the game when one team just has dominated the way they have? Well, I think it's good for, I mean, obviously if you're the team that's dominating, <laughs> you would love to be in that situation. But it also allows you to make sure you're raising the bar for your kids. You know, they're the defending national champions. It's going to be a great matchup. It's not going to be um, the same outcome as it was at their place. Um, we, we obviously had a roster, a huge roster change, um, not to mention the injuries, but also um, not having certain players return to the roster. So, you know, we go from having the game plan of, of playing a UConn a certain way to now changing it when you get down to six players. But I like the, the matchup of UConn early. It's going to allow us to see where we stack up against a team that um, is, is one of the best teams in the country. And I know our team is a lot different, and I know theirs is a lot different too um, when you lose three All-Americans. But I know that he's going to have his team prepared as well as we are. And we're playing in, in the PMAC, and I want to just really, um, you know, just make a plea for – People to come out and watch this team this year. It's a different team. It's a team that's again that 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 has a little chip on their shoulder. It's a team that understands uh, the season that we had, move on from it, and let's focus on the positives right now going into this season. And that's what they've done. Uh, this is a team too who they know they have the potential to be one of the best teams in the country. And it's just a matter of can we gel in the right way, stay healthy and allow the great players that we have on our team to excel. So I need players to understand their responsibility and their role and play it to the best of their ability. And I like the fact that UConn is coming here. Um, we went to their place last year. They had a great crowd. But this is also a chance to, to show you know, the, the, the East Coast what SEC basketball is about. And it's going to be a battle. And I'm excited for our team to be in that situation. I'm glad that ESPN has recognized that as a premier game. And they're putting that game on television for us. 
Um, but again, playing a team like UConn uh, two weeks into your season, uh, it's it's going. If you're and I remember Coach always saying this, Coach Summit. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get us, you better get us early. And so our mentality is let's let's get after them early. Thank you.